Is this another thing from the Bible? Because I still haven't read the Bible since the last time the show referenced the Bible. The Joes are testing a missile that can follow radio signals. The upshot being that this Cobra submarine that sent a message to a Cobra satellite basically just points the way for the new missile. And if that sort of thing is in the Bible, then maybe I'll give it a look after all. We watch a Joe pilot do some pretty cool stuff for a while, but I didn't write any of it down because nobody said his name, so I didn't know what his name was. After about five minutes of this, I finally broke my own rule and looked it up. It's Slipstream. Funny how the guys I remember have episodes about them where people say their names out loud and the guys I can't immediately identify are shuffled way into the background most of the time. Slipstream is voiced by Dan Gilvezan, whose name is still pretty fresh in my memory because I recently read his book about the time he spent voice acting for Sunbow. It's a great read, highly recommended, and as much as this feels like a paid endorsement, I assure you it's not. I just don't know how to make a smooth transition between snark and genuine excitement sometimes. You can't possibly be this far into my reviews and not realize that. Slipstream bails and approaches a crashed Cobra plane. What the? Weren't expecting a female Strata Viper, G.I. Joe? Honestly, I've been pretty impressed by how the show has managed to work a bunch of female voices in as incidental Cobras throughout this entire season. It's a pretty well-established thing by this point. So I get what they were going for, but it kind of comes off like that time Lisa Simpson said, That's right, a girl is playing football! And then three other girls were already on the team and it completely deflated her moment. The two of them are stranded here, and I just realized why they went with that particular title. <laughs> Enemy Mine, for those of you who somehow don't know, is a sci-fi movie about two enemy soldiers forced to cooperate. It was also the premise for an excellent episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. I assume it was also used in a bunch of more down-to-earth war settings, but I can't be bothered to look those up. This iteration of that story is pretty good, but I find myself running into the same problem I often have with decently written character-driven episodes, which is that it's hard to make jokes because nothing particularly stupid or insane happens and mostly I'm just sitting quietly and watching. They fight off battle android troopers, which for some reason don't recognize Raven, that's her name by the way, as a cobra. They bicker, they come to grudgingly respect one another, and she betrays him. I didn't want to give the impression that I was just rushing through these to get to the end, though I obviously am, but there's just not all that much to talk about this time. Well, until this thing shows up anyway. Turns out this island is home to a failed Dr. Mindbender genetic experiment. Could this be an earlier iteration of Serpentor? And if so, or hell, even if not, have you guys considered putting this thing in charge for a while? He couldn't possibly do a worse job. Then we discover that Dr. Mindbender has been watching them this whole time, which shouldn't be a surprise because seriously, Cobra just has cameras everywhere, which still kind of creeps me out. Mindbender's totally cool with letting Raven die for the sheer entertainment value of it, which is enough to drive her to quit Cobra and join the Joes. Well, I look forward to seeing this new character on the team in the forthcoming... one episode. <laughs>